All right, so my goal is to do a video series kind of like how I would do a college course on how to be a musician. And there's definitely a focus on hip hop, uh, but I think that a lot of the things in this total video series really apply if you're any type of musician and or if you just have an interest in one of various different things that we're going to cover. So Again, this is this is kind of like a college course in the sense that this is the 101 class. We're basically going to be talking about everything a mile wide, but only an inch deep. So we're going to talk about music theory. We're going to talk about how to make your own beats. We're going to talk about how to make your own album cover. Uh, all the things that I think that, you know, as an individual, if you want to be a musician, you should know how to do. Otherwise, you're going to be asking other people to do it for you, and then that's going to cost money in the long run. And I think, you know, if you have any hope of being successful, you're going to get a lot farther if you know how to do all these things yourself and you don't need to rely on others. Because once you run out of money, then, you know, how are you going to get that album cover? How are you going to make that music video? How are you going to promote yourself if you can't do it yourself? You know what I mean? So, we're again, we're going to be covering a lot of different topics. And the first thing I really want to just get into, I want to dive right in and talk about recording. And you might not be ready to record right now. You might not, not have the money to record. But I think it's something that everybody should know how to do. And, you know, at the very base of it all, it's really kind of, you know, what allows you to get better. It's like if you if you want to learn how to swim, I can teach you all the techniques, but if you don't jump into the water, then I can't actually know that you know how to do this, and you can't know that you know how to do this. All you can really do is kind of, you know, listen to my instructions and kind of imagine them, but you can't actually put them into practice. So the first thing we're going to talk about is recording, and we're going to talk about microphones real quick. And again, like I said, this is a mile wide and only an inch deep. I'm not going to give you all the details about microphones. There are some things you should know. Uh, for example, there are two primary types of microphones, uh, dynamic microphones, and then you have condenser microphones. Now, dynamic microphones, you probably think of when you, uh, when you're, when you have, you know, a live concert, you see somebody holding a microphone, uh, if it's a comedian or whatever, you know, this is pretty much what you probably have in mind. It's a very, you know, classic type of dynamic microphone. And you'll you'll see different types. Um, for example, I know, I think it's the RE20, RE20 microphone. And this is a very common microphone. I used to have it a long time ago. Uh, but it's very common for, like, radio talk shows. Um and it's still a, a, a dynamic microphone. It just looks different. So just because it doesn't look like a handheld microphone uh, does not mean it's not a dynamic microphone. You would you would have to actually like look it up online, read the details about every individual microphone to know. Um, you know, if you go to one of various you know websites, you got Sweet Baby is one. Um, I just pulled this up. You, I'll talk about this later. But Sweetwater, not Sweet Baby. That's a different uh, website, I think. Sounds like a porn site. But anyway, um, so Sweetwater, uh, they sell all kinds of things. And if you are in the market for a dynamic microphone, you could just type it in. Dynamic microphone literally just popped up after three letters there. Um, but um, this is great for live performances. And it's great if you do not have a controlled environment. What that means is uh, if you're at home and let's say that outside your window you got noisy neighbors or maybe the car is driving by all the time or you know the air condition is pretty loud all those background noises if you don't want them in your recording a dynamic microphone is probably better for that because if you don't actually treat your room and get you know proper sound acoustics then uh, you're going to be picking up a lot of things that you don't want in your recording. And, you know, we're going to talk about mixing later. But no matter what you do, no matter how good you are at mixing, if you do not get a good quality recording, and people might tell you differently, but this is, you know, just a fact. You cannot make a, a really terrible sounding uh, recording sound good. You can make it sound better for sure. You can filter out some of the noise, but if you, you know, but there's only so much you can do without affecting all of the, you know, audio. It's like if I filter out a certain frequency in my, in, in the background, but that frequency happens to be in my voice as well, it's going to filter out that uh, frequency in my voice. And that's going to, uh, uh, you know, presumably 
you know, have an adverse effect on how it sounds on my voice. So the point I'm getting at simply is if you do not have a controlled environment, you're going to want a dynamic microphone. Now, alternatively, they have condenser microphones. And these are the ones you typically see at a studio. And again, these will pick up every little nuance in your voice, which is you know, a good thing if you have, you know, soundproofing and you have, you know, a, a microphone booth and everything that you need to make sure that you, you're not picking up random noises outside. I will say one thing about condenser microphones is that they always need some kind of power source. So usually you would buy a preamp. There's all kinds of different preamps. Uh, these are just straight up microphone pre uh, preamps. You've also probably seen mixers. Uh, most mixers have preamps inside them. And I know they look really cool, but the chances are you probably don't need a mixer. The reason why they have all, you can see there's this uh, black knob up here and this entire column. Essentially, that is meant for one uh, particular microphone. So you would have four different microphones right here. And you would have one for, let's say, vocals. You might have one for a guitar, one for drums. And the idea is that it's recording all these individually and you can adjust the volume of every individual one. You can change the EQ. That's what this top section here is for so if you have a low frequency you're basically filtering it out and if you have a high frequency you can filter it out with the bottom knobs here um and you know every single uh mixer is different if you're watching this video the chances are you probably don't need a professional mixer with all these different microphone inputs because you probably don't have four five six seven microphones so i know it doesn't you know really look as cool these are very old school and you know you see them in rap videos and all kinds of videos all the time uh but what you really want is something a lot more low-key <laughs> like this and you know this is basically the same thing you know you have an input right here uh which is for the xlr right here which is the type of microphone cord that you're going to need uh, but you have an input and then you have this is the gain, which basically turns up the volume. Um, and, you know, every single preamp and every single mixer, is, they're all going to have different knobs. They're all going to do different things. Um, you, again, that's something that I would leave for you to research and try to figure it out on your own. The point is, is if you have a condenser microphone and you have some kind of uh, sound control in your house, you're going to want some kind of microphone preamp. Now, again, I'm not going to cover everything entirely. Every single preamp, they all have different types of knobs and different types of features to them. And, you know, it's definitely up to you to research them. They all kind of have the same basic functionality. Uh, they'll have some kind of volume control. A lot of them will have EQ. And, you know, you'll again, you're seeing a lot of the same things that you saw here where you just have, again, EQ. You have, you know, the input for the microphone. You have a, a knob down here that will allow you to just the volume um, and that's pretty much all there really is to it again like I said uh, mixers have preamps built into them the only point of having a mixer is being able to mix multiple different uh, instruments at the same time or multiple different microphone inputs so the third type of microphone that I want to talk about is the USB microphone and they look very different you know some of them might be modeled after um, you know these are very very old Radio Shack mics um, but uh, some of them look more like uh, condenser models but the 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 main point here is that they're very simply plug and play you have a usb and you plug it directly into your computer and that's pretty much it you uh you immediately can probably use it your computer should pick it up uh should have all the drivers already and drivers meaning that uh it, it's software that your computer needs in order to understand um the technology uh, understand how to process the microphone as input Real quick, I want to talk about this thing right here in case you don't know what it is. It's called a pop filter. You'll see them. There's all kinds of different types, and they're all pretty much the same. They're very cheap. They're like 10 bucks. Um, you know, some of them are even cheaper. You can make a makeshift one, but I would advise you just go buy one. They're not that expensive. Um, the whole point of a pop filter is if you have a, a sound like a P or a B and uh, there's air flying out of your mouth, it'll basically stop the air and it won't uh, basically get into the microphone. And because um, what it'll do is it'll cause like a, a clicking, um, a clipping is the correct term, I think. Uh, uh, it'll cause a clipping sound and uh, it, it just won't sound good. So really that's all it does is stop it from uh, making that sound. Anyway. 
The main thing I want you to take away from this video is that there are three kind of options that you have for microphones. You have the USB microphone, and this is the one that I advise that you get. There are many different types. You can get, um, you know, depending on what your budget is, I, al I always, you know, advise people to get whatever the best one that you can get is. Um, you know, here are all these different microphones. They're all USB. That symbol right there means that they're USB. And again, you know, you got all these different uh they all look different, but they're the same thing. Uh, you know, different designers like to be flashy and they like to, you know, make make it into a ball. I don't like the look, but, you know, that's very subjective. They all do the same things. Blue has a, a pretty good reputation for making good quality microphones. I've never liked the way they look, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what your microphone looks like as long as it does its job. So don't get caught up too much on what they look like. A dynamic microphone can definitely look like a condenser microphone. As you can see, all these USBs look very different. Um, you, you can probably just type it into, you know, uh, Google or whatever and find out, you know, the actual model and it'll tell you pretty straightforward, uh, is it a dynamic microphone, is it a condenser microphone, etc. So the microphone I'm using right now is a Samson CO1. Let me type it in. CO, I think this is it. This is a USB microphone, and all you have to do is take the USB end of it, plug it directly into the USB slot in your computer, and it's pretty much good to go. If for whatever reason it doesn't show up, you can always click down here, go right-click, and then go to Volume Mixer, and it might have different... Uh, it might be called different things on your computer, but um, I'm going to go to System Sounds, Recording, and it'll show you different microphones. Right now, you have a microphone built into your computer, so even if you don't buy a, a microphone, a condenser microphone, a dynamic microphone, you can still record using your computer. The problem is, uh, the, normally the microphone is not anywhere near your mouth, and uh, if you're like typing anything, it won't pick up. It's a very low-quality microphone, so uh, I definitely encourage encourage that you go out and buy a microphone uh, on the low end they're about 50 bucks 40 bucks you can probably find some for cheaper than that there are definitely 10 20 dollar microphones out there they're not amazing but they will do and when you plug in your USB microphone, it should automatically set it to be the default. But if it doesn't, you know, I just want to make sure you know where this window is, how to get to it. Right click here. You can set as default device. So now I have my computer microphone set as my uh, default device. But that is not what I wanted. So returning back now, you can hear, obviously, I changed my microphone. And my microphone is now my uh, USB microphone. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Close that out. If you decide to get a dynamic microphone, this is an example of one. For the record, I just want to say do not ever hold your microphone like this. This is the part of the microphone that picks up the sounds that you're putting into it. And if you're gripping it, it is going to be picking up the sound of you gripping it. And it will affect your quality in a bad way. So always make sure you're holding it by the handle, which, which is why it was made. But these generally have a typical headphone jack at the end of them. So you would plug them into your laptop or computer and uh, your laptop or computer should have a microphone uh, input on it. If it does not, you're definitely going to need a, um, a USB because that is kind of uh, antiquated uh, technology. You can also get a microphone preamp and sometimes, depending on which one you get, they'll have um, uh, an actual input for your microphone. So even if you get a dynamic microphone, you can still use it with a preamp however it is not necessary to have uh, what is called phantom power which is basically just putting power into the microphone and so that's what this button is you would turn that off if you're using a dynamic microphone I'm back with a quick edit here. You might notice that the input right here is actually a lot bigger than your normal uh, headphone input, and you would be correct and that's because uh, you would need something like this uh, this is a let me see if I can pull up a different one. Uh, they're all kind of the same thing. It's just a quarter inch to an eighth inch uh, adapter. And you would plug in your headphone, uh, you know, part right here. And then it would basically just make the output bigger. And um, there is a myth that gold is somehow better than silver for, you know, audio quality. Uh, that is not true. However, gold does last longer. So there are some long-term properties that might... Uh, that might you know be more beneficial because it doesn't rust as well but uh other than that uh they're pretty much the same both of them are pretty cheap as you can see this one is three dollars and 45 cents so um 
you know, again, uh, something you should research to find out which one, you know, is best for you. But really, it doesn't make that much of a difference. And if you decide that you want to use some kind of condenser microphone, you're going to want some kind of acoustic treatment. But even if you can't get anything professional done, uh, definitely make sure that you're recording in a room that is carpeted. Make sure that, uh, you know, you have things in it. Like if you have clothes, if you have a bed, um, anything that is soft kind of, you can probably, you know, use as not a substitute for um, proper acoustic treatment, but it will help. I want to make a real quick edit here about acoustic treatment. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie Hustle and Flow, you'll notice that uh, in the background, he put up a whole bunch of uh, drink cup holders. It's a movie, okay? But do not do this. It, it is not a uh, suitable acoustic treatment. Uh, first off, this stuff is hard. Uh, you do not want anything hard. Uh, when you're talking about um, acoustic treatment, you want, you know, soft materials. I mean, when you actually look at, you know, Oralex, let me look it up real quick, Oralex um, foam. This is proper soundproofing foam. And it, it's normally, it's soft and uh, it's porous, meaning that there's holes in it. Um, and, you know, it, it's material like this would be more suitable for uh, absorbing sound. Now, this material is actually designed for that purpose. Uh, alternatively, you can, um, you know, find egg crate foam. Uh, you can find it at Walmart, and it, it's still not that thick, uh, so it doesn't work as well as you would think it would. At the end of the day, having something is better than nothing, but it is worth noting that you can have too much acoustic treatment, and it will actually kill the sound. What you do need to understand about sound is that it will bounce off of walls and it travels at a very quick pace. So you won't even, you know, hear it like an echo. An echo normally happens when it takes a long time for the sound to reach its destination and then bounce and return to you. But normally when you're in your house, it'll, it'll bounce off of the wall pretty much immediately, so quickly that you will barely even notice it. Or the amount that you do notice sounds more like what they call a reverb. And we'll talk about reverb a little bit more when I get to mixing. So just know that having really hard surfaces and yelling into them will cause it to bounce back and give you a reverb that you probably don't want in your recording. But also know that if you have too much acoustic treatment, it will actually um, kill the sound. It'll make it sound dry. And there's a lot of math that goes into properly treating any type of room because every room is different. They're not all shaped the same way. Therefore, the, the, the bouncing is not going to happen. You know, it, it could be going off in this direction or that direction. And then a wall could be right here or a wall could be right here. And the way that it bounces is, is, a, is completely unique to every single room that you go into. You know, when you look at uh, this little thing in the back here... Uh, I forget what they're called. They're like vocal flex booths. Basically, the only thing they do is kind of act as acoustic treatment. I've heard mixed reviews on them. Some people love them. Some people hate them with a passion. They, they think it makes the sound, you know, more boxy or whatever. I've never used one personally because they cost a lot of money and they get very mixed reviews. But what you see here is kind of everything you would need for a, a, a condenser setup. You have a microphone. You have the pop filter. Uh, you definitely want a pop filter if you have a condenser microphone. You have your mic stand here. You would put, you would mount this on top of the mic stand. Um, and you have an XLR cable. And the cable basically goes into the bottom of the microphone. The other side of it will go into uh, the microphone preamp. You basically connect it right here. And then on the back side, they usually have uh, another... Uh, output that goes to your computer and you know that will basically allow you to record from your microphone to the preamp to the computer and then the computer picks up the sound. Now I think I've covered just about everything I want to cover as far as microphones are concerned. Uh, again this is an XLR microphone cable usually used for um, condenser microphones. Pay close attention to you know you got the male version and then the female version. They also have uh, these which you know will allow you to connect an XLR portion to a quarter inch and it really just depends on what type of um, mixer you have you know they could have a very different setup and you know what what type of chain you have because even though they have mixers they also have uh, hardware 
uh, that will act as a compressor, uh, an equalizer, all kinds of different things. So you could have entire chain. You know, you could hook your, hook up your microphone to a you know compressor, to an equalizer, to a, um, a preamp, and then that will go to your computer. It's important to know that your sound quality normally would be as good as the weakest product in your link. So you can spend thousands of dollars on a really nice microphone, but if you have a really crappy preamp, it probably will not be as good as you would like it to be. It would be better if you spent $500 on a preamp and $500 on a microphone most of the time. And again, this is something that you should really research on your own. I'm giving you the basics of what you need to know as far as microphones are concerned. If you are just starting out, I cannot emphasize how much I, I definitely think you should just get a USB microphone and, you know, start learning with that because it is so much, you know, easier to, you know, to not have to deal with all the extra, you know, luggage of, you know, a preamp. And honestly, I have a $2,000 setup that I have sitting in my closet, not doing anything with it because... I just, I'm, I'm too lazy to actually hook it up and want to, you know, record with it every time. And also the acoustic uh, in, in my house right now is not set up the way that I would like it to be. And it doesn't sound that much better than the $50 condenser microphone that I normally use to record. And, and part of it is just the fact that it's a lot easier to just plug it right in and start recording whenever I feel like I want to record. So it's a very subjective thing. And while I'm looking at this picture right here, you might be wondering what this is. Pretty much the same thing as a pop filter. You would put it on top of the microphone. Um, it also kind of helps if you're, I don't know, recording outside for some reason and there's wind. Uh, this is a wind screen. Uh, but it kind of does the same thing as the pop filter where it tries to stop wind from getting into the microphone and affecting your sound quality negative, negatively. And that's about everything I have to say about microphones right now. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. The next tutorial I will be talking about recording for the first time. Uh, we'll actually start walking through how to record assuming you have your microphone set up. Even if you cannot afford a, any type of microphone, you can probably use the, uh, the microphone that is built into your laptop or your desktop. The, the fact is that the quality just won't be as good. But it is entirely possible and 100% free to do so, uh, assuming that you're not factoring in the cost of the computer itself. Hopefully you learned something new about microphones. Again, do your research on these products. If you're starting out, Making music for the first time, I really advise that you do not spend, you know, a lot of money on a setup. I also don't think you should spend money on going to a recording studio until you feel like you're really comfortable with recording, uh, really comfortable with making music, and you're getting good feedback uh, from people who are saying that, you know, they really like the music that you make at your home, you know, without going to a recording studio. Because if people start saying, oh, you know, that music is really good, then that means that you should probably start thinking about going to the recording booth or possibly just investing in a much nicer setup at your house. I personally love to record at home. I, I think it gives you a lot more freedom to do weird things. And, you know, you don't have to... When you go to a recording studio, you normally get a block. And that might be an hour, two hours, three hours. And you have to do everything. You have to record your song. You have to wait for the, you know, engineer to mix the song. And, you know, kind of convey what ideas you have for the song to that person. And hope that they can understand what it is that you want and what you have in your mind. I think you get a lot more freedom when you're recording at home and you can do all the mixing and everything yourself and get it sounding the way that you want it to sound. And you also have a lot more time to do it and you don't spend as much money as you would if you were to go to a recording studio. And depending on your setup, depending on your uh, actual environment in your house, you can get equally good recording quality out of a home setup as you would in a studio. That being said, to do so, you would really have to spend a lot of money. So there's always a trade-off, things you should definitely start thinking about. But when you're first starting out, I highly advise a regular USB microphone. You just take it home, cost maybe like 30, 40 bucks. You know, some of them cost more, $100, 150 
for the most part, I think microphones are priced pretty well. You get what you pay for. If you buy a $100 microphone, you're going to get a $100 microphone. If you buy a $1,000 microphone, now that's not always the case. And, you know, it's a very subjective thing. Everybody, you know, has a different voice. Everybody has different uh, opinions on what they think, you know, they want their stuff to sound like. So a lot of it is trial and error, going out, trying out different microphones and trying to find something that fits you and sounds good to you. And that is everything I have for this video. I will see you next time.